It's pretty impressive to be named the best pub in the entire world. So what makes the Harbour Bar here in Bray so special? Let's go in for a drink and find out. The You won't find a flat screen TV inside the Harbour Bar. In fact, don't go looking for pub grub either. This is an old style boozer where a pint of Bavaria is the most common brew. And if you want a cocktail, then you'd better go somewhere else. It's a laid back atmosphere here, so much so that the owners didn't even know they'd scooped this prestigious award. You were informed by a friend of yours in America? That's right, yeah. I got a call from the States to say we were on USA Today and Irish Central magazine and all this. And I was kind of, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, uh, yeah, it was a, a shocker, right? We were delighted. Oh, Absolutely I'd say delighted. delighted. Well, tell us a bit about, this is my first time in the Harbour Bar, okay. and it's quite, I suppose, eclectic would be the way to describe it, steeped um, in history, uh, yes, quirky. Absolutely, all, all three, <laughs> sticking them all together, happy. Um, it was bought in the 30s, yeah, by my grandfather, and then passed down to my father and my uncle, and then obviously this is the third generation, so I'm even training in my son Oliver at this stage, you know, he's doing a little bit of cleaning on a Saturday morning so uh, would you say much has been done to it since it was bought back then not a massive <laughs> amount we, we keep the bar as original I mean the original taps and all still on the counter so we, you know we don't want to do too much to the place. Describe a bit of the layout to us because you've got art and, and, and a conservatory in one yes, room. Yes, with the younger side of the pub and then it comes through to the, the older, you know, clientele come into the bar here for the trad sessions and so on and so forth. And then the other side of the bar, we'd have a punk band playing one night <laughs> or a burlesque show playing or, or a rocky horror show or, you know, but and then this side you'd come in and there'd be a trad session in full swing. So uh, a different crowd on both sides of the pub all the time. So. The furniture as well is, is yeah, it's kind of, what, what kind of shabby chic, would you say? Shabby chic. <laughs> <laughs> this is furniture that actually people, customers, have bought and donated to. We've had, yeah, people just drop their furniture down here and we'll stick it in if it looks good enough, you know, <laughs> which is great. Uh, and their artwork and their, you know, whatever they have going, we'll, you know, if it suits the place, yeah, we'll stick it up. Tell us about your clientele. I believe you've had the likes of Bono and Neil Jordan and, of course, Liz McManus lives across the street. Of course, street. yeah. We've had this and we're lucky to have had some, some very famous neighbours so they bring all their friends in and uh, you know, Bonner will bring everybody from the music business and Neil Jordan brought everybody from the film industry so you get a, a very weird mix. And, and a lot of movies have been shot here. Yeah, we've had uh, Zonad was the last movie, we've had Breakfast in Pluto, we've had the first harp ads were made here, the first Kilkenny ad, you know, just the list of endless. And of course you've even found a film script behind one of the radiators, tell us that story. We did, yes. Uh, 15 years prior to finding it, Neil Jordan dropped it down the back of the radiator. And uh, what was the movie? I, I, as, as far as we can figure out, it was Mona Lisa. So, right. <laughs> so he dropped it down the radiator behind the radiator. the radiator. Forgot about it. Forgot all about it. Uh, and I was doing a job over there one day, and hey, presto, <laughs> there's a there's a ledger with Neil's name on it and everything else, and I threw it up onto the counter. I left it there for the whole day without realizing what it was. So. But uh, yeah, it eventually found its way back into his hands anyway. So. Okay, you have a big moose head that was donated. That's right, yeah. Uh, Peter O'Toole, uh, in his heyday, uh, used to drink down here uh, when he was up in Overmore Studios. So uh, Des and Paul, my, fa or my father and my uncle, uh, used to bring him home every night when, you know, at the end of the night, if you know what I mean. And uh, oh, when he left Ireland, uh, he donated two heads, just appeared in crates uh, over, over a course of time. One was a, a, a bear's head, which ended up on the wall in here, but unfortunately years ago it was stolen, and <laughs> <laughs> which isn't great. Uh, and then the other one was a moose's head, which is still, uh, still in the lounge at the moment. So. Right. If you were to describe this bar to the people watching this morning, how would you? Uh, we put our own personal touch to it. Uh, we stand behind the counter and pull our own points as well. So you'll always see one of us, uh, a member of the family, you know, helping out and and you know serving everybody. And what about the decor? Because when I came in initially, I thought it had kind of a, a touch of Johnny Foxes to it. We are original. We're here well before Johnny Foxes. <laughs>